So today we're gonna to talk all about WordPress news. Now there is a lot of big announcements from a lot of theme companies and a lot of plugins that are in current beta right now. And also some things that are really pissing off some hosting companies. So I'll be talking all about all these current events in this video. But first we're gonna go ahead and talk about a recent current event with Matt Mullenweg, the CEO of WordPress, who kind of had a heated debate with a lot of people asking certain questions like, will WordPress themes be outdated because of Gutenberg? And I'll show you his response in this video. But first off, one of the questions here was basically, why does WordPress have a negative stance, I guess you can say, towards products that are not GPL? Now, this guy was basically ranting and upset at Matt Mullenweg, basically saying that uh, Envato's like their big brother and they should be more supportive. But Matt Mullenweg took the stance and just said, well, we support 100% GPL products. And that's the end of the story, right? So let's go ahead and, and have a, a quick look at their conversation right here. So let's go and take a look. So you, you cannot complain we did with say one law. question. Sorry, sorry, there is a U law saying that okay. now, you, like Google and Facebook cannot take images from authors mm -hmm. and without paying them. That's EU Sir, law coming for this would year. You stop? Sorry, so the moderator has to actually step in three times during this conversation to basically make this guy shut up because uh, at this point, the guy's just ranting. He's pretty upset. Stop right here. Sorry. Stop, stop right, right here. here. This is Ooh. not flying. You're not respecting everybody's time here. This is not about you here. This you asked your question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> People driving to be quiet. So it was just some guy that was just pretty much really upset about a lot of the rules with and WordPress and everything. So these are important issues to talk about. You know, it's it, it happens. Later or change email. And that moment like has a good good I'll answer by just saying, further. "I'll follow up with you later." All right, another question that somebody had over here. Let's talk about this question right. This is a good question my right here. My name is David from Chemnitz, Germany, and my question is: When will a democratic structure implemented on WordPress.org? and okay. related to set a transparent decision-making process. So when will... So basically this guy's asking, when will, there be, when will there be a democratic process for WordPress? Now you've seen in the past that Matt Maldwe made some decisions that really piss off the community and the community sort of wanted a response to this by introducing some sort of democratic feature where people can kind of vote, etc. But one of the big problems with this is that it's not really followed, it's not really enforced, and to me, to, to, to be honest, I think this is more, the WordPress governance project is more of just a feedback community. That's what I personally believe because no matter what people tell Automatic, no matter what they say to him, he's gonna do what he wants and he has every right to do what he wants. Now, if, if I could say something about this, what Matt Lawnwood could do, which I don't think he will, is make the company public. Do you think WordPress.org, WordPress should be a public company, meaning there would be shareholders, it would have a, a, its own IPO on the stock market, people can vote, people can vote the CEO in, can vote them out. And to be honest, as somebody who, who who's had a business before, it's kind of scary to see that you can actually be thrown out of your own company, kind of like Spider-Man. Remember Spider-Man, how Green Goblin was voted out of his own company and he became evil? That is exactly what could happen if the company went public. So this is something to think about. I think the company going public could be a good and bad idea because, I mean, shareholders don't know anything about WordPress development, you know? So who would they, who, who would they be the person to vote on that? But that's just my personal opinion. Um, so he basically just talks about, you know, a democratic Perfect. structure. <laughs> Mm. And he's just basically saying, we don't know. I don't know. So that's basically his answer, and that's all we're going to get out of him. So another really important question, well, will themes be outdated because of Gutenberg? This Let's take a look Martin. here. Um, based on the evolution of Gutenberg that you just presented, which is super cool, by the way, <laughs> um, and eventually having all the customizations, mm -hmm. blocks, uh, that one can ever need in Gutenberg. Do you think that themes will become obsolete? Mm. You know, the best answer there is I don't know. I don't know. They're gonna change. So that's basically his response to it. He doesn't really know. Now this really worries a lot of theme development companies because in short, in, I guess you can say in a nutshell, people aren't trusting his plan we don't know his true motive here now i'm not saying the guy the guy's like some sort of evil person i'm just saying that from a business perspective from a theme development company when he says something like that if i was developing themes and he says that we don't know what gutenberg's going to do to themes and we ask them will they make themes obsolete he says i don't know at that point 
you know, I would be a little skeptical if I were a theme developer by saying, well, what's going on here? What's your plans? But again, I don't think themes are going anywhere at all. I mean, you have so many innovating companies creating just amazing products like Divi, Elementor, a new one, Brizzy. So again, I personally don't think themes will ever be outdated, page builders will be outdated. I think Gutenberg will always be a choice of a page builder that might, you know, it might compete with other page builders, but ultimately, I think that uh, other theme development companies will always dominate the market in that aspect. So that's my personal opinion about it. So next, let's talk about something that's very big that will be affecting more than 500,000 customers, which is Avada. Now, there's no, there's no secret. I am not a fan of Avada. I've never liked Avada. I think it's a bad builder. I, it's not bad. It's just it's not for me. We'll, we'll go ahead and say that it's not for me because I feel that it's just a very uh, bland and old-fashioned style. A theme. Now, this company is actually introducing, let me say it, a front end editor. Woo! A front end editor for Avada. Now, that is going to be interesting. So, the company actually did introduce or did talk about a current Avada 6.0 being in beta, which will basically allow a front end editing experience just like Divi, just like Elementor, and just like Brizzy. So that is something to look at. That is something to think about. Uh, currently, right now, if you were to ask me, Daryl, what do you think about Avada? I'm going to say I don't like it. I'm just going to say, hey, I don't like it. I think it's very clunky. I don't like it. But the fact is that I, I do like this company because they're they're innovating. I like them because they've created their own builder. You know, I don't like theme companies like I, I don't want to sound like an enemy, but like Jupiter or kind of like Astra, where they rely on the page builder to do everything and it's just the shell. I kind of like the innovation of companies that actually develop their own products like Flatsum, Divi, and Avada who have their own builder, their own theme, and they're not reliant on another company to make them successful. Because let's be honest, you know, for for uh, those other theme companies, if there were no page builders, the theme would be useless, right? So I do admire the the um, these companies when they're creating new stuff and they're always trying to improve stuff like that. So I do I do like that. I do appreciate it. Even though I don't like the theme, we will have to keep our eye on this. Um, you can go ahead and join their Facebook group, ask them questions about it. But I think it will be a few months before we actually see the actual front end editor introduced on Envato Market, but that's just something to think about. Really exciting news. So if you are an Envato customer out there, you should know that front-end editing will be coming your way pretty soon. So that is something to take a look at. Next is a new plugin by Google. Now this plugin right here will actually add some really nice analytics and everything to your dashboard. So you won't have to go check your analytics on Google Analytics. It'll actually be all from your dashboard. And it's going to show a lot of really important information like what pages are being searched the most. It'll give you insights saying, hey, you should try this, you should try that. And it'll all be accessible from your dashboard. Now this right here is actually available right now in beta. So if you wanna go ahead and grab, I believe it is called the Google site kit or site kit google site kit google plugin wordpress just type that in on google you'll be able to find this you can go ahead and get the beta and check it out see if you like it and again i think that if you're running a website you know it would not hurt to have this plugin at all it looks really cool and innovating next is a really big announcement really big announcements now now these are the rumors going on here and nick i hope, I hope you don't get upset that i I'm, I'm sharing this information but i am in a facebook group with divi web designers and we have an official statement from nick roach regarding the theme builder it's getting really close right now because it's being delayed it's because there are other features we need to get out first to make sure that the theme builder is fully functional this includes global default and woocommerce modules oh my god all three of the theme all three of the features are finishing up right now Theme Builder has already gone through its first round of Q&A testing, but it's it's likely needs another round. It won't be much longer now. Pretty exciting stuff. I'm currently waiting for that. You can see everyone over here is is pretty uh, pretty staggered by that. They're pretty uh, they're waiting for that. So again, that is some pretty big news, and hopefully we will see the Theme Builder coming out for Divi pretty soon. Next, let's go ahead and talk about a new plugin. Now this plugin's not really new. It came out maybe like a month and a half ago, two months. And this is actually a WooCommerce analytics plugin for WordPress. Now it's basically kind of like the WooCommerce orders pages, but it's a little bit more dynamic. It talks about your taxes, your orders, your categories, your, your downloads, stock customers. So it's basically a revamped version of the actual WooCommerce orders. So you can go ahead and check it out. It's actually available when you download WordPress or WooCommerce and it actually recommends it. Uh, I did actually use the plugin, so it's actually 
it's pretty cool. You know, I like the I like the details it gives. It's just something to actually help you out with taxes and and stock and everything. So it's just WooCommerce trying to improve their service, which I really commend. So be sure to check it out. It's a free plugin. It will not cost you anything. Next, I'm probably sure you've all heard about this, but yes, WP Engine and Flywheel have combined. I guess WP Engine has purchased and acquired Flywheel. Personally, I've never really used Flywheel, so I really can't say anything bad or good about this. I don't really know uh, too much about Flywheel. I mean, they do have around 200 employees, which is pretty big. They're based in Omaha, Nebraska. And it looks like uh, WP Engine acquired them, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I don't think this will... Be anything negative i think it's something positive because uh, wp engine um you know they're known to be a good reputable hosting company so i would trust their judgment here i would trust their decision that they're making so be sure to check that out if you want to go ahead and check out wp engine if you're a flywheel customer you are now a wp engine customer so i don't know if that i don't know how you feel about that i personally i wouldn't care as long as as long as my website's up i don't care what they do right next we'll be talking about a little little I guess you can say a uh, little thing that got a lot of people mad at Elementor recently, and that's because they no longer have unlimited websites. Now, personally, do I really think this is bad? No. So basically what Elementor did was they were offering their $200 a year plan for unlimited website support and everything else, and it turns out they actually reduced it to 1,000 websites. Now, 1,000 websites is still a lot, a lot of websites, so I really couldn't say this would affect I mean, this would probably affect maybe the 1% or something like that who actually have more than 1,000 websites. But they did increase, they did decrease it from unlimited to 1,000 websites. And I think people are more upset of the fact that uh, Elementor didn't talk about this to their audience. Just one day I woke up and it was just 99. At first it was 9,999, now it's 1,000. So, um, you know, it's just something to think about. People don't like the ethics of the company by saying that this was deceitful. They should have had an open dialogue and discussion with their customers before they did this because it did affect some customers. But, I mean, that's a lot of websites for a 1,000 websites. So I personally don't think it's a big deal. I think that offering support for more than 1,000 websites for $200 a year uh, is ridiculous, you know, to be honest. So uh, I do think that the, the decision maybe should have been talking more to their customers about this, but I personally don't think it's a really bad decision. I think that's, um, you know, it's a business, guys. You know, it's just, it's business. So that's just, that's just how it goes. Uh, next is um, Elementor introducing icons for their page builder. So they will be introducing an icon library sneak peek. And here we can see that there's a lot of different icons. So I do like that because that does actually it helps with a lot of things. You know, it helps with you having not to go to get S, you know, PNG files going on a hunt down icon pig or something like that and trying to find your own your own icons you have them all accessible right here from um from your uh, elementary builder which is really cool so that's just something they're going to be introducing pretty soon so i did like that feature i thought it was really cool next is cpanel and cpanel this has no effect on pretty much anybody except for hosting companies where cpanel is now basically charging a lot more money for cpanel so you could see so so because of this decision by cpanel you could see your hosting company start getting rid of cpanel and maybe introducing the other um what was it i guess you want to say the other not cpanel but ftp account and your manager uh maybe i believe it's pronounced softaculous which is an app installer which i happen to like i think it's really fluid i think it's really easy user friendly and simple but a lot of companies are coming out and saying that they are no longer going to be using cpanel because of this so if you are using cPanel with a hosting company, you should be using SiteGround, they're really good. In fact, actually, uh, SiteGround uses cPanel, so this might affect them, but this company right here is saying that this they, that they had now have a 800% price increase because of cPanel and their cost, which is staggeringly high. I mean, if you're paying, if you're paying $100 a month for hosting, and now you gotta pay $800 a month for hosting, that's a pretty big difference. In fact, that would make a customer leave. I would probably leave as well. Again, this person right here, said the same thing, this other hosting company, they are saying they no longer use cPanel and they're stopped issuing licenses because of these changes with cPanel. So this could be the end of cPanel. We don't know. We don't know if cPanel is gonna, uh, gonna disappear. I mean, quite frankly, I think cPanel is very old fashioned and I don't like how they haven't updated any of their, their user interface. It's, it's, to be honest, it just looks really old. I do like the Softaculous. I do think that this is a more modern fluid style. I think this site's using Divi. I, I don't know, is this site using Divi? It looks like they're using Divi, so it's just, I don't know, but it's a very ugly website. Jesus, what is this, dude? Like, what is this? Like, 
I mean, these images are just like, they're all pixelated, you know? They should have, I don't know, whatever. And lastly, um, Brizzy is growing. Brizzy is growing. Now they are at around 50,000 active installs. And also you can make changes from right here and it'll actually sync with your site and update it um, in real time. So I think that's really cool. So the Brizzy Cloud is actually pretty innovating. It did actually make Product Hunt their like top, their number one for Product Hunt. A lot of people love it and I would really check it out. In fact, they do still have the lifetime offer. I highly recommend to get the lifetime offer. The link is below. So basically, once they are actually done with all their pro features, they're not going to offer lifetime no more and they're going to offer the subscription model that Elementor offers, which is $200 every single year. So I really highly recommend to lock in the lifetime while you have the chance. It's gonna save you a ton of money in the long run. I have a full tutorial on the Brizzy Page Builder in the description below. It's an amazing, it's a, it's, it's a very amazing plugin, I'm telling you. Um, a lot of people don't like to switch from plugins, and I get it, you know, when people are using Divi, they saw Elementor, oh, I like Elementor, they go over there, and, and then now that Breezy's out, people are like, well, I don't want to cheat on my page builder. You're not cheating on your page builder. You're not cheating on your theme. You're just trying different stuff. You know, don't don't get physically attached to your product, okay? Just just try it, try, just try it, you know, just really try it. And lastly, um, the host gator screwed me out of 53 grand. Go figure. Well, if you want to watch that video, it's, it's out in the description below. So let me know what you guys think about all of these features. Let me know if you're using any of these products that are, you know, if you're using any of these products at all that it might affect you directly, such as Avada. Do you like the back end for Avada? Do you, are you a Avada customer? I personally am not. I've never really been a fan of the theme. I don't know why it's number one. I'll just go ahead and say it right now. I don't know why, but uh, they are introducing a front end feature, which I think is really, really, really cool. And also be on the look for the Divi theme theme builder, which should be introduced pretty soon. So again, if you guys have any questions or you wanna talk about anything, let me know in the comments below and I will see you all later.